Okay, um, over the last month or so, I've been having trouble with my 550 Ford again. Uh, the alternator has given me an ass ache of biblical proportions, so I replaced it again. Now I've got a Wilson in there, I think I made a video of this thing. Well, I'm continually having problems with the, uh, with this plug actually. So I went over Motorcraft and I got, well I didn't actually go to Motorcraft, I went to Coach's Repairs and had them order because it's on my way home and he doesn't charge me any more than he's supposed to. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, and I had uh, bought a new plug to go on my alternator because this one here obviously just wants to annoy the ever-loving crap out of me. So, anyway, it has some really long leads and it has three leads, so I'm going to delete the center one. I don't need it for my operation here. And I'm going to be cutting this bit of Afro engineering here off because it just... I don't know whether they're worn from vibration or whatever, but I've fixed them a couple times. You can see I fixed it here. Someone else has fixed it there. So what I'll do is I'll set up my camera and uh, you can watch me ch chop and hack at that thing. Hopefully it doesn't take too god awful long. And I hope I don't knock over my camera while I'm in the process. Uh, anyhow, kind of a dreary day out here. They said that the weather wasn't supposed to change. It was supposed to be kind of nice and nasty, not just nasty. <laughs> if that makes any sense to anybody. Um, yeah, so I, I really don't want to lose this uh, plastic thing, but it looks to me like it's going to come apart from being old. And that's basically all it is, is old. Um... Yeah, that actually, when you heat shrink that right there, I think there's a silicone style stuff that schmutzes out, or they put silicone in there, which I don't know that I agree with. But anyhow, I'm going to figure this guy out. Now this kit, this kit that I have here, it comes with everything you need. I'll show you as I take it out. It has the wires or the plug which I'm going to remove the center wire from I don't need this guy here apparently it's not required I don't know if there's a two prong well anyway so it's not required I don't know what it does so we're just going to take it away um, comes with a little instruction kit which or instruction mat pamphlet which I'm not going to use because I'm not that stupid uh, thing that it does come with and I don't know that I really want to use them but I'm going to is these little solderless clamps so what you do is you just kind of strip them back and I'll use those and it comes with heat shrink which will shrink right fast to that so let's say we uh, clip this off of here. I'm going to cut it back even with itself because it wasn't even there. Um, I know it's in the plug that the problem is because the uh, just the way that it was acting. And I'm going to strip a pretty not not too much, but just enough in there that I can get my little cramp, climp, crimper gizmo, my solderless connection, which I probably should solder anyway, but I'm not going to because, well, if, you, if that heat shrink works right, it won't need it. And I like to give them a little bit of a twist so that the copper wire doesn't like fray when you stick your little repair links on there. And let's see this set of wire pliers here on the very end has a really nice crimping style uh, bump in it so it should crimp it really pretty decent well, I'll put that on there and yes it did fit nice Ooh, I'm gonna squeeze the shit out of it yeah and as you can see 
which I could probably zoom in on that. See that nice little crimp that it made there? That's what you want. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to do that to the next one. There. Now, this kit, this repair kit that I'm doing, cost $48. Yes, $48. I about dropped a nut when I heard that, when he told me how much that was to be. Now, Bins, I'm going to delete out the center one here, this guy right here. I don't know that I really want to destroy it. So what I'm going to do is, you never know when you need another lead or something, you know? You don't know. And I don't think... Yeah, there is a wire there, so what I'm going to do is just, just that, and I'm going to come back in with some liquid electric tape, and I'm going to put over top of that thing. And, of course, I'll slide on, I'm going to slide on my heat tubes, heat shrink tubes up here. And I don't want, like, monumental amounts of wire sticking out here, because I really don't need that much. So what I'm going to do is, where Ford had bent them, they had bent these wires, I'm going to cut them off flat. And there they are. Try to keep things the same length because if you don't, you uh, have a tendency to have the wire kink. And where things are kinked and they move, they have a tendency to actually break inside. So you just really want to be careful with what you're doing uh, in the in the kinking side of it. You don't want any kinks. Ugh. So, I've got these twisted, like so, and now I am going to go back to my old plug. Now there's a green wire and an orange wire, and I'm going to set them up so the green wire actually goes to the right. So, I'm going to kind of stick that in there where it belongs, and I got a guy coming for hay and he just showed up here. So, or corn, I mean, and he just showed up. So I'm gonna crimp these real quick and shut the camera off, and then we'll get back to uh, the project at hand here in a minute. As you can see, I'm crimping pretty quickly now. There it is. Voila. And that's that. Yeah. So it's all crimped up. And another thing is I'm going to tape this after I get it all heat sealed. But for now, um, I'm going to go deal with the corn guy. Okay. You can hear the heater in the background now. Um, liquid tape. This is an R-Peak special. He needs to buy some of this stuff. But uh, anyway, at least I think he does. I don't know. I like it. Works really, really well. Kind of like a, I don't know, it just works really well. Anyhow, what I'm going to do is, like I said with this center one, I'm just going to put a little bit of a goop over the top of that. And there it is. And that should do away with that problem. Now, all I really have to do now is slide over my heat shrink and be done with that. Now somebody once told me that I was supposed to stick silicone down in there and uh, heat shrink over top of the silicone, but I've been since told not to do that. I don't really know the reason why, but that's just what I was told. So, I'm not gonna be putting any silicone down in there. Um, I was thinking this liquid tape though, but it would make a mess. I mean, it just, it may be flammable and stuff, but anyhow, I am going to shrink that with fire because I don't have a heat gun. All right. I got my propane torch here, oh, which is acting a little funny. So, when you use a torch like this, you really kind of have to gently heat the shrink 
with the heat shrink because if you don't, it'll actually burn it and destroy it. And we don't really want to be destroying the heat shrink. We just want it to uh, do its thing and you know be all good. As you can see, I'm getting just a slightly bit close to it, too close. And look at that. Whatever's in that heat shrink, there is a sealer in there, and that's something. Look at that. So yeah, as you can see, there's some kind of goo on the inside of that stuff. So, anyways, if I'd have put silicone in there, I'd have probably ruined the heat shrink because it already had some kind of sealer in with it. Anyhow, looks to me like uh, I am just about done. Oops. Yeah, buddy. Let me get over here. And that's it. I'm going to shut my torch off. Alright. So, now that thing is in where it belongs. Oh. It's in where it belongs. My uh, my little guy there that I just took my electric my liquid tape off of. I'm gonna hit it again. Let me let me set my camera down and do that one more time. Oh, and you can get this liquid tape in different colors too. So it's you know it's pretty handy stuff. Alright, so there it is. Now before I clean my mess up here, I'm going to go and start up the truck and see what happens. Hopefully it starts because the damn thing didn't want to start earlier. And over here on the left hand side, where you see that battery, red battery light, yeah I know there's a lot of dust in there. It wouldn't work, but I'm waiting for my glow plugs and, yep, battery is dead. Okay, well. We're going to have to do a take two on this one because I'm going to have to charge up my battery and I will use my uh, Napa brand battery jumper gizmo to start my truck. So I will be putting my stuff away and uh, then I will jump start it and we'll get back to that.